Tony Stark, I'm Dr. Stephen Strange. I need you to come with me. What is your job exactly besides making balloon animals? Protecting your reality. Where are the Avengers, man? Who are you guys? <laughs> Stars. You never once used your greatest weapon. Big two, Thanos for his Iron Man, two showdowns, and it's all about the cool movies leading up to right here. We got Rocket and Jr., Josh Brolin, going hand to hand right here. Stark. How do you know my name? I know your soul. It's much like mine, cursed with knowledge. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Holy shit, it's you and McGregor. <laughs> it is you and McGregor.
How is this dude still alive? He's not a dude. You're a dude. This, this is a man. A handsome, muscular man. A muscular man. <laughs> Here we are on the set of Avengers. I've been lucky enough, along with other Guardians of the Galaxy, to join up with the Avengers mm. and be here and get an opportunity to save the world. Does it make you an Avenger now as well? <laughs> I don't know. I hope. Maybe like a third string Avenger, yeah. I was one of the founding members, so. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Oh, so he's huge. You know, out of all of the people that I've had the good fortune to work with, these two particular guys and the triumvirate that we formed together, it's very special friendship and decade plus of time together. Go team, yeah! It's been this witnessing of like people's lives growing and changing. It's been a really cool experience. Working with Lizzie has been really, really awesome. And I think there is something very powerful about being able to play women who do heroic things. And those women are so awesome. So we've had a really good time. Hanging out with everyone on the set is one of the best parts of this job, actually, because it does have this kind of large extended family feel. I had a bit of a bucket list. I wanted to work with Prax. So I thought he'd be good fun. Proven completely wrong on that front. He was arduous and boring and not particularly funny. Boom! Well, at first blanche, it's hard to know what to make a Cumberbatch. And then the more time I spent with him on and off set, I just kind of infatuated with this guy. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, the journey that Robert Downey Jr. has made, he's the godfather of all this. It has literally been the adventure of a lifetime. I get a little misty thinking about it. So, you know, I lucked out. Tell me his name again. Thanos. One of the early decisions we made on Infinity War, we knew we wanted to go big. The storyline of Infinity War is big. The cast roster and character roster of Infinity War is big. The visual effects, the worlds we visit are big. The movie had to seem big. And Joe and Amp said, let's shoot in IMAX. And the question up to that point was, okay, well, which sequences? I said, no, the entire movie should be shot in IMAX. They're fantastic cameras. The chip is incredible. It's at a resolution that is unprecedented. So I think as filmmakers, it's an amazing tool for us, the way that it captures light, the way that it captures color. On the roof! In Civil War, we had a sequence that took place in an airport. And that really became a test scene for us for a couple of reasons. The first was we never had that many characters interacting with each other before in one sequence. It was also a test for those IMAX cameras to say, can we utilize the sheer enormity of this frame? And the answer quickly was yes. It was the success of that sequence with all the cast, with the IMAX cameras, and with Joe and Anthony Russo directing that really gave us the confidence to say, let's even embark on Infinity War. Let's put more characters in it. Let's certainly have Joe and Anthony direct it. And let's use IMAX cameras for the whole thing. This <laughs> does put a smile on my face. I think if you were to look at the last 10 years as a, as a book, Avengers 3 and Avengers 4 are the final chapters of that book. There are some endings, and there's some new beginnings. At the, one of the great values of these movies is like nobody's ever seen something quite like them. The level of ambition in these films are pretty high, and we needed uh, equipment that could help us fulfill that ambition. In time, you will know what it's like to lose. To feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail all the same. From day one on a production, when the cameras first start rolling, we think about the audience that is anticipating the experience, that will be buying their tickets early, waiting online if they have to, reserving their seats, sitting in that theater, waiting for the lights to go down. And we just think about one thing and one thing only, delivering on that promise, delivering on that experience. And that's the immersive experience that IMAX gives you where you lose the rest of the theater, you don't see it, all you see is the image, and allows you to be in that world. Because that's what we want. That's what we want the audience to experience, is to be on that journey with us, with the characters, in as full and rich and immersive a way as possible. And that's what IMAX does. I hope they remember you.